Located deep within the vast tracts of tamarack and spruce trees in northeastern Minnesota, lies a landscape with a storied history. An area once deserted by mankind, now filled with wildlife perfectly suited for what remains in the region. In the early 1900s, the bogs around the small towns of Sachs and Zim were drained in an effort to increase agricultural production in the area. When those efforts failed, the towns dried up. Various conservation groups, land management agencies, private landowners, and visitors to the area worked hard to protect the habitat that remains. The sachs zim bog area may not have been a success for farmers, but what it left behind has become a haven for birds and those that love to watch them. The Saxon Bog is about 300 square miles, roughly, of, you know, it's not just all bog though, it's a mix, it's kind of the magic mix we call it. There's lowland tamarack and spruce, there's, uh, there's upland aspen, there's areas of maple, there's meadows, there's old farms, towns, rivers, lakes, but it's really that, that the big extensive tamarack and black spruce bogs that give it its name. Wildlife watchers and photographers from all over the world come to the bog to view the various birds and animals that spend time there. Specifically during Minnesota's colder months when the main attraction can often be seen hunting from a branch near one of the many roads that intersect the bog. So we have nine species of owls that people can see here, which is probably more than any place else on the continent. The star of the show for sure is the great gray owl. They are year-round residents here. They nest in these bogs. They're easiest to see in the winter. And then second would probably be the hawk owls. They um, sometimes nest in the bog. We have a good sharp-tailed grouse population. And uh, this morning it was fun because we got to see them popping out of the snow drifts. Uh, they will burrow into the snow on cold nights. And then in the morning they'll just kind of pop out and uh, go about their business. And then we saw them fly out onto the lek, and the lek is the dancing ground. And they were, you know, even though it's January, they were amped up and chasing each other and displaying. And so the testosterone is already flowing here in, in mid-January. While the Saxim bog might still be new to some Minnesotans, the area has gained fame across the world. Well, interestingly enough, uh, a friend of ours in New Hampshire has a Zaxim bumper sticker on his uh, birding vehicle. We started talking to him about it a couple years ago and told us what a great place it, place it was and we started doing our research and we heard you guys had a, a lot of owls here this year We decided to do the trip. We've seen four or five great greys. Yeah. Uh, two northern hawk owls, two, which was a lifer for me. Yeah, uh, they both put on great shows. We watched them hunting and uh, uh, that was just a lot of fun. We've seen both the great gray and the northern hawk owl oh, yeah. watch them hunt. That was fun. Yeah, absolutely worth it. Great place. So here at the Saxim Bog, you got some snowshoe trails. You got to have a special hat if you're going to go snowshoeing. Here we go. Great grays are hunting, you know, completely by hearing. They are looking down in the snow and they're not really looking with their eyes, they're looking with their ears. And, you know, their big facial discs are, I mean, exactly, we've all heard it, like little satellite dishes. And they are just kind of moving the satellite dish, trying to tune in the signal. And uh, they can hear that vole rustling underneath. You know, it's always been said that they can hear a bull under two feet of snow at 100 yards, which is phenomenal. And it's because of those big facial discs and then their ears, their ear holes are in the front of their skull. One's a little different place, a little different size and shape. And so once they hear something underneath the bull screen under the snow, they can launch off that perch and kind of float out over the spot 
and they're looking down the whole time and they're triangulating. And then once they lock on, they're just poof, they just plummet straight down face first. At the last second, they might throw their feet up in front and they can reach down 18, 22 inches under the snow, pluck a vole out. And sometimes you'll see them go down and they'll come in looking down. They're not looking, they're still listening. And they're, they're kind of taking their feet and going like that because they might have missed it. And they're trying to catch it. And then once they catch it, they'll transfer it to their beak. And then they'll look around because they're kind of, they don't want anything else to take it from them. And then they'll fly, you know, either swallow it on the ground whole, or they'll fly up to a perch and, and eat it whole. 97% of their diet is voles. Redback voles, meadow voles. Occasionally they'll take uh, shrews. They are big birds with little beak, little talons. Uh, their whole life is built around voles. Owls may be the main attraction, but other birds are popular with visitors to the bog. My entire life I've uh, been an animal caretaker and I've fed the birds, I've, I've fed the wildlife. And I grew up on a farm and I guess I started doing that when I was a little farm girl. Mary Lou has set up a bird sanctuary on her property in the bog. It's my uh, pleasure, my joy, my hobby. In the wintertime, I go through 200 pounds of bird feed a week. It, uh, it relieves a lot of stress. It just puts life and fun in my life. The bog is an important bird area designated by BirdLife International in Audubon, but that carries no protection at all. In 2011, I got together with some friends and said, you know, Sags and Bog needs a voice. People were coming up here from all over the country and it was just a bunch of dirt roads and people would say, oh, you know, is this it? You know, and we felt, you know, we gotta, we gotta build a welcome center and we gotta start buying up land because the rate of black spruce logging was increasing. Uh, we're not anti-black spruce logging, but black spruce is kind of the critical habitat for these birds that people wanna see. And it takes 80 to 120 years um, rotation, logging rotation for black spruce. A lot of people are owl crazy and uh, you know they hear about the owls here and they everybody is sit telling us I wish I could go and we tell them hop on a plane. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great place. The Saxim Bog is an expansive rural area about an hour's drive from Duluth, an area worth visiting to spend hours watching its residents and learn a little bit about our past here in Minnesota. This is, this is made for TV, this spot.